Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. Should financial institutions, mainly banks, be privately owned or publicly owned? A new study by Perry, the Political Economic Economy Research Institute, written by Devika Dutt, has just been published, which relates the theoretical debates about this question among economists to the actual empirical evidence. It shows that many economists are blinded by the, their ideological adherence to the private sector, even in the face of hard facts. The report is titled, Does Greater Public Ownership in the Financial System Promote Superior Performance? A Study of the Literature. The economic crisis of 2008, which was discussed mainly as a financial crisis expanding to include all sectors of the economy, made this debate about public and private banking much more relevant. Back then, we spoke to Professor Leo Panich, who explained that there are limitations to what private banks can do. Now, in order to do that, it leads on to the next thing. In order to do that, yes, you probably do have to have a banking system that isn't just regulated, but is a public utility. You know, is a repository of a democratic, accountable state, which directs the funds that pass through the banking system in such a way that the climate crisis, the type of production we need in order not to be destroying nature, uh, does in fact happen. Here to discuss the new Perry Report is the author, Devika Dutt. She is a doctoral student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Her work at Perry focuses on exploring alternative ways of organizing financial markets and financial market reform. She joins us from New Delhi, India. Thanks for joining us today, Devika. Uh, thank you for having me, Greg. So according to the data you present in the report, immediately after 2008 uh, financial crash, there was a sharp increase in public ownership of financial institutions around the world, mainly because governments bailed out banks and took them over. But in 2010, the ratio of publicly owned banks fell back to the ratio just before the crisis. So banks were privatized once again. What is the argument in favor of private ownership of the banking sector? Um, so usually economists have, uh, the way, best way to put it is a bit of a distaste for publicly owned firms. And um, they typically argue that publicly owned firms of any kind, banks or otherwise, are typically inefficient and um, are prone to be operated according to, uh, as per, uh, according to the best interests of whatever, whichever politician is in power. And, um, and therefore, most of the economics literature does not look very favorably on privately, uh, publicly owned firms of any kind. So that is usually the argument in favor of privatization that a private firm, because it's operating according to the discipline of the market, is going to operate in the most efficient manner. However, as we have seen yeah. that, uh, especially in the case of banks and in the case of other firms, but since banks and other financial institutions are somewhat different than other firms, um, I think it's safe to say that it's not such a clear-cut distinction that private firms are necessarily operating in a more efficient and necessarily better manner. I feel that, um, and I, I think the overwhelming evidence also shows that uh, the experience of the crisis is sort of a testimony to that in which large privately owned financial institutions are operating in, in whatever, whatever we define as an efficient manner um, sort of wreaked havoc on the financial system. So a quick look at the map uh, in your report shows that the countries with the highest proportion of private banks also tend to be the countries that are wealthier and have a higher per, per capita income, such as Western Europe, North America, and Australia. Uh, and public banking is more common in China, Russia, India, Latin America, and the Middle East. It, wouldn't this be an argument in, uh, for privatization of banks? Or is it wrong to assume that uh, a cause and effect relationship between private banking and uh, increased wealth? Well, uh, I think I think it's a bit more heterogeneous than that. I I I don't think that's an entire entirely correct argument. Uh, in fact, if you're looking at necessarily advanced nations, uh, Germany has a very high degree of public ownership, and Germany is one of the most advanced nations of the world, and is for the most part uh, not as bad, poorly affected, badly affected by the crisis as all these other countries that you have mentioned. So while there might be a correlation in terms of uh, richer countries in general, with, with some notable exceptions, like, as I said, Germany uh, having lower public ownership and poorer countries having higher public ownership. There, 
uh, I would not, I would hesitate to um, call it a cause and effect relationship that higher public ownership is causing slower economic growth and therefore slower growth in per capita incomes. In fact, there are several studies to show, which I cite, that that is in fact not, that, that is not observed in the data, that higher public ownership or in the banking system is not related to lower uh, GDP growth or lower growth of per capita income. So uh, I would not agree with that statement. So uh, to what extent would you say then that um, the choice between uh, as to who to lend money to is a political choice? And what is the difference between a private bank and a public bank with regard to making a choice about where to lend money? So the biggest difference between a private bank and I, and I, I, I would I want to qualify the statement by saying that usually since the, the, the nature of public institutions is very heterogeneous and um, and if, if you if in, if uh, if you can see in my paper, I've outlined all the different kinds of banks which uh, deal with different kinds of um, objectives. But in general, I think it's safe to say that uh, while private banks operate primarily uh, to maximize their profits, public banks usually have other objectives um, that they seek to fulfill. So while they might not necessarily be operating uh, on a loss-making basis, which we would not want them to, because that would be a drain on any taxpayer's money. However, uh, they operate in a fashion that would likely also be serving other objectives other than um, profit maximization. For instance, uh, small businesses are credit constraint almost all over the world. What, what I mean by saying, uh, when I say credit constraint, is that usually um, the normal banking system or the normal financial system, the private financial system, is unable to serve their, their um, credit needs. And more often than not, it is public banks or government programs that allow for lending to these small and medium businesses, which are in fact, which, ha which generate not lots of jobs and lots of growth. Uh, if, for instance, in the United States, the Small Business Administration has a program that encourages normal private banks to, because uh, the United States has very few public banks, to, uh, the, so the, the program of the Small Business Administration um, encourages private banks to lend to small businesses. And so, these are, so uh, clearly the government thinks it's worthwhile to uh, make sure that credit is available to small and medium businesses, which is not otherwise being provided by uh, the private financial system. So this is an example of what I mean by other objectives. So I think that is the main difference between uh, private banks and public banks, is that private banks only want to maximize profits and public banks want to do other things as well, which, uh, which would have welfare effects for the society at large. So can privatization reduce opportunities for corruption in the public sector uh, because public officials have fewer opportunities to wield public institutions as their own personal fiefdom? Um, I think that's also a fraught point because privatization in my mind does not ensure lack of corruption. In fact, uh, there's there's research to show that pretty much no matter what form, if you're politically connected, regardless of whether your ownership is private or public, you can have influence, you can pay lower taxes and um, and enjoy the benefits of having friends in the government. So while I, I it would be foolish to deny that public ownership does not necessarily mean that to some extent uh, we will find um, those firms being used as as you said the personal fiefdom of whatever politician is in charge however i would want to say that there is a lack of research to show how much this is the case with private firms we often hear that uh uh, like in disputes between, say, a big multinational corporation like Deutsche Bank, and when it ran, it, when it ran, when it ran into trouble with uh, U.S. Reg financial regulators, uh, you would hear news reports in which Angela Merkel is sort of um, intervening in their behalf. So, in that sense, I, I, it may not be the same, but I think it's not clear or it's not a plain link to say that privatization would reduce corruption or would reduce. Um, like would improve operations and reduce sort of less political favors being handed out. And I don't think there's enough research to to show the extent of private corruption to so, show if it's necessarily less. Um, 
So once again, I don't. I, I think you're right, and it would, as I said, it would be silly to deny that there is no um, corruption in in the public sector or in publicly owned firms. However, how it compares to privately owned firms or corruption within private firms or how they link up to the political establishment is something that has not been systematically studied. And therefore, it's a hard comparison to make if privatization would necessarily reduce uh, opportunities for corruption. Hmm. And what kind of evidence did you find about how publicly owned banks and privately owned banks and insurance companies and other financial institutions operate differently in times of crisis? Right. So um, there is a large body of literature, and I cite all of it in my paper, which says that during um, during during the financial crisis, while privately owned firms, privately owned banks are contracting lending because they're in trouble and they don't have uh, their 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 maybe their loans are defaulting, maybe their capital uh, ratios aren't in are, aren't healthy at the time, and therefore while they're reducing lending, therefore making the recession worse. Um, there are several studies to show that government-owned banks or public banks are actually playing a stabilizing role by either increasing or not decreasing lending during times of crisis. And in the face of, of, of private firms reducing, um, private banks reducing credit in times of crises, and this is this provides a great stabilizing role so that, so that the recessionary forces are somewhat mitigated. Um, and in some cases, um, so again, this effect varies across uh, the context and institutional um, institutions. Um, and I think the study that when countries in which institutions are more robust, uh, the way we define it, that the, 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 the rule of the law is more um, prevalent, or I guess their future and when they say rule of the law, I think they're talking about how their future, there are checks and balances on corruption, which are more than in, say, other countries. Uh, the effect is almost sometimes even counter cyclical that which by that I mean that uh, public banks might be increasing lending in times of uh, crisis, which once again provides them to be a stabilizing force. However, it's also important to note that public banks are over the business cycle in general found to have smoother lending. And by that, I mean that it's not like the exploding lending when during good times, which are then like, which is then collapsing during bad times. So they're sort of maintaining a more steady um, lending pattern in comparison, which once again provides a stabilizing influence to the economy as a whole. Okay, very interesting. I was speaking to Devika Dutt, who joined us from uh, yeah, New Delhi, India today. Uh, she's of the Political Economy Research Institute. Thanks again, uh, Devika, for having joined us today. You're most welcome, Greg. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.